Hey there, I'm Viano, and in this 18th video tutorial on D3, I'll continue with the histogram layout that we created in the last video. Uh, and in this part, I won't explain every little detail of, of what I'm doing, since most of it is covered in, in other videos in this series. But I'll, I'll explain the parts that are new. Um, so uh, the purpose of this part is to style this histogram up a bit. We covered the, the, the basic principles of the, of the layout in the previous video, but we'll append an axis and um, make use of some scales and just make it a bit prettier uh, in this part. So uh, first of all, let's uh, increase the number of bins. So we have some more stuff to play with. And um, I'll begin by erasing this, these manual adjustments of the dimensions um, of the rectangles, since we'll be replacing this with scales. I'll also create some dimensional uh, variables instead of hard coding it. So we'll set the width and height and give it some padding to make room for our axis that we'll create in a minute. So we'll set the width to the width and the height to the height plus padding again to make room for the axis. So uh, let's begin creating our scales. We can do that down here. So var i, this will be the uh, vertical scale which plots uh, the height of each of each bar and as you probably remember the height um, represents the number of values within each interval so the number of persons that has an age within this interval uh, so this will go from 0 to and we could do this manually by looking up uh, the max so let's const console.log our histogram and I'll show you what I mean um, so our array here contains a, a number of arrays each of these are the intervals or the rectangles and um, the highest number here is 17 the first um, the first range so we could just say uh, go from let the domain go from 0 to 17 but we could also do this in a fancier way and a better way which would be to use the d3 max um, d3 max function which takes the maximum value of any given array and we'll supply this with another function um, the, the map function returns so we'll say histogram that data uh, and this is just bonus material you could you can just ignore this if it's uh, if it looks too complicated uh, so histogram data and this will be a function that will return the length of each array so the length property uh, is a property that every array in JavaScript has and it refers to the number of elements in that array so what we're doing here essentially is returning the length of each array and handing in handing that over to the d3 ma max function which takes the maximum value of that new array that we're handing over to it so this uh, basically it has the same function as just writing 0 to 17 but it's uh, computed automatically for us so and the range will go from 0 to uh, the height so uh, let's pass on our data to that scale mm, okay something went wrong uh, do, 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 do. return length height let me pause for one second oh I screwed this up this is not supposed to be data we're using the map function so let's refresh. 
So our Y scale seems to be working. Good. And uh, we'll continue with the X scale, which uh, plots um, the range of each bin. So the left border of each bin represents the lower bound of that interval. And uh, the uh, X scale will also be serving as the basis for our horizontal axis that we'll be adding short, uh, shortly. D3 dot, oh, D3 dot scale dot linear. And the domain will, let's just prepare this. The domain will go from zero to the maximum age that we have in our data. Uh, since the uh, right border of the uh, outer right rectangle will be furthest to the right in our canvas. So we can just do this d3.max and um, get the maximum age by uh, calling our map uh, array, which stores the raw array of ages. And the range will be from zero to the width and let's pass on our data to those scales and refresh okay looking good Ooh, the next thing okay so what if we wanted to um, flip over this whole visualization instead of drawing from the top to the bottom we we want to draw from the bottom to the top well uh, the way to do that is make the y position function of our data as well and this is simply okay so at this point if we return 500 what what does that mean it means that each rectangle will be drawn from uh, this line here 500 pixels down to the bottom and uh, but that's not what n that's not what we want so let's subtract from this the uh, um, the height for each bar so we'll say y d y so what this essentially means is that okay for each bar the y position is 500 down uh, minus the height of the bar so we're going let's say it's uh, 200 for one particular bar up 200 pixels and then we're setting the height of the bar to uh, the y property as well so it goes down 200 pixels uh, for that uh, for that particular particular bar so if we refresh this uh, we see that the whole um, all the rectangles are are flipped over um, right, so let's add our axis. X axis will be d3.svg.axis. The scale will be the x scale, and we'll orient this to the bottom. And uh, let's append a group for that. Mm. Let's just call it group. And we'll say canvas append g and then we'll call our x axis let's take a look at this okay so we have our ax axis here but we want to move it down so we'll just uh, uh, transform it and we'll say translate zero to uh, the horizontal and then we'll concatenate uh, the height so we'll move it down um, the height and then like that let's take a look at this okay so it's down here looking good and we can actually move everything a bit to to the right as well so we'll say attribute transform and this is to the whole canvas translate 20 pixels okay 
Now for the, uh, the last thing we want to do is to append some text to each bar. Uh, so we, we can see that we can see how many values it contains or how many elements it contains. So let's append to the bar group some text. And uh, the X will will just imitate the bars functions here. We'll return X DX and for the Y position we'll return five hundred minus Y DY and uh, let's give it a white color so that we can see it and uh, we'll set the text anchor to middle and then the actual text will be a function of our data and we'll return DUI, which is the number of elements. Let's save and take a look at that. Okay, so we see that we have. You can see that we have our text here, but it's not in this in, in the right uh, place. What we need to do is move it move it down a bit. And that is accomplished by using the DUI attribute. Uh, so we'll say let's say twenty pixels and take a look at that okay but each of these are um, too much to to the left so we'll move them to the right a bit so let's make let's set the dx property as well and uh, since we know that each uh, the width of each bar is a function of the dx property or the range we can for instance let the dx attribute be a function of the data and we'll return the dx d dot dx and divide that by two so that we we get into the middle okay looking good um, so yeah, um, like I said, I didn't have time to explain all the part, all the uh, details here, but most of it has been covered in in other videos. But that was the uh, um, a quick overview of the histogram layout. If you have any questions, please uh, make a comment in the comment section or send me an email. Or uh, yeah, I guess those are the options. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.